Hello everybody, welcome to unit three, day seven. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about the creating of a new government and the Articles of Confederation. Uh, now the Articles of Confederation had been drafted and were the form of government that we had in place during the American Revolution. Uh, and really the Articles of Confederation were set up to only do a few things and to do a few things well. Uh, one of those things would be to sign a peace treaty, so to conduct war and then have a peace treaty. Uh, another thing it was set up to do was to deal with any land issues and that kind of thing. But really, that's all the Articles of Confederation uh, had been written to do well. And after the American Revolution, uh, it's going to become apparent very suddenly uh, and very quickly uh, that the Articles of Confederation were not sufficient and would not... Um, do the work that they needed to be done to keep the basically new states under control. So when you're looking at the Articles of Confederation, it's got some pretty big weaknesses. Uh, one of those weaknesses was no taxing power at all. Uh, it could not tax and it could not retire, require the states to pay any taxes. And that would be George Washington's headache the entire American Revolution. Uh, you're gonna see that a lot of his writings during the Re American Revolution focus on him begging John Adams and others saying, hey, get me the stuff that I need so that I can win a war. Uh, and during the American Revolution, you're gonna have some states that are like, eh, I don't wanna send any money or some colonies at that time. And they didn't wanna send money with the help of the American Revolution. Uh, other issues with the Articles of Confederation. Uh, it was basically impossible um, to change the Articles of Confederation. Uh, the uh, Articles of Confederation required that every state had to agree to any changes to the Articles of Confederation. Uh, I don't know about you, but I could tell the whole room right now I'm going to give you a million dollars, and somebody would object to that. Most people would be happy with it, but somebody would be like, mm, I'd prefer to have two million versus a million. Uh, so having everybody agree on a change, that's always very, very difficult to do. So that was other another problem of the Articles of Confederation. And then finally, what would bring things to a head would be Shays Rebellion that hap happens in Massachusetts. Um, you're gonna see that after the Revolutionary War, the economy of the new states now was in very, very bad shape, especially for farmers and that kind of the stuff. Uh, the war had really taken its toll and the economy was in bad shape. And in Massachusetts, you had a lot of people losing their homes and farms, but also being thrown into debtor's jail uh, for not paying off their debts. That is gonna lead Daniel Shea a Continental Army veteran uh, who gets tired of that. Him and his men are going to uh, march into Boston and other areas, shut down the courts in those areas, and basically so the courts couldn't meet to throw people in jail. And uh, because of Shays' Rebellion and the fact that the U.S. government really had zero response that it could do to that, it depended on the state to deal with that, uh, you're going to see that's going to get George Washington and others thinking, Maybe we should change this up and do something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to give you the example of like the L.A. riots or even some of the protests and riots that we're hearing about today that are becoming more violent, uh, that the National Guard is sent in to deal with those. Under the Articles of Confederation, the National Guard, there was no National Guard and it could do nothing about, if it even existed, it couldn't have done anything about uh, open rebellion like what was happening with Shays Rebellion. So... That is going to lead George Washington, uh, James Madison, and others to first meet at the Annapolis Convention, which would then come the Philadelphia Convention, uh, where they were first coming together uh, to talk about uh, changing the Articles of Confederation, and then very quickly becomes clear that they were just going to scrap the entire uh, Articles of Confederation. You will notice that with the Constitutional Convention uh, that you are going to have some very uh, prominent people in the American Revolution that are going to be left out of it. Guys like Samuel Adams and Patrick Henry, and we'll talk more about them next time. But yeah, the Articles of Confederation, you're going to see uh, they don't work out and we're not able to govern, um, basically because the states had way, way too much power and the federal government was very, very weak. Um, it would be interesting uh, one of the fun things about history is always to think, oh, what if? And uh, that's why I always wonder, like, what if the Articles of Confederation hadn't been scrapped? Like, what would our country look like then? And uh, I encourage you, when you're thinking about that kind of thing, look at the news and think about that today. I see the news today, uh, and you see in our country a lot of division all over our country. And 
what under the under, under the Articles of Confederation, like what would have happened to our country today with the division that we have? Like, would we have split into two countries, that kind of thing? And we're going to see even with the Constitution that a lot of these questions aren't fully solved and that you're going to see under the Constitution, we would have our nation break in two for a four year period. So um, you'll be reading parts of the Articles of Confederation today and be writing an obituary for the Articles of Confederation um, uh, another little fun tidbit with the Articles of Confederation is that sometimes you will hear people say that um, George Washington is not the first president uh, because under the Articles of Confederation, you didn't have a president, you had a head of Congress. And under that, some people say that like, oh, he's the actual first president of the United States. Sorry, that's just not true. George Washington is the first president of the United States because under the Articles of Confederation, there was only one branch of government. And in that branch of government, there was no president. So there was just a head of Congress. So uh, as always, if you have any questions, uh, please ask them to me. Uh, I love hearing from you guys and being able to help you out in whatever way I can. Otherwise, have a great day.